Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all seven of the Ninjago Golden 10 Year Anniversary Collectible Figures. It's quite the mouthful, but we finally have the full collection. These were released as part of the Ninjago Legacy line over the course of the year of 2021, and each one of these can be found in a very distinct Ninjago Legacy set. We of course have seven of them in total, all six of the Ninja, alongside Master Wu. So lots of figures to collect here, and as such, Ninjago Legacy was a very, very, very sought-after line this year because so many people just wanted to complete this collection. And now here today, we finally have all seven of them ready to be reviewed and showcased as a solid group. Now, I've already talked about some of these figures before on the channel, but I wanted to do a single video with all seven of them. And now that we finally have all seven figures, we can actually make this video. I'm going to be going through each one of these individually, giving my thoughts on the figure, what they are supposed to be referencing, and which sets you can find them in. So we're going to be having a pretty laid back video today, just giving my thoughts on these figures. And uh, why don't we start off by taking a look at Cole in the back left. I think that's a good place to start. And then we'll just go through uh, from left to right. All right, we're going to be starting off by taking a look at Golden Cole, which can actually be found in the Ninjago Legacy remake of the X1 Ninja Charger. Now the figure itself is quite quite nice. Something I do want to complain about really quick, the legs on all of these figures are the exact same. For some reason, for some mystical reason, LEGO decided to use the exact same legs on all seven of these figures, which the legs themselves aren't bad, but I just wish they were a little unique for each character. What is unique for each character is the torso printing, and Cole's here is really, really nice. I love the earth detailing going throughout the print, I think that looks really good. The gray also contrasts really well with the gold, and the mask is obviously very much a representation of Cole's Master of the Mountain variant. It's the exact same piece that those figures used, except with a gunmetal gray instead of whatever color that the ninja would respectively use. Um, the gray itself, like I said, it's not black. You can kind of see how it compares to the hammer in the back. It's not black. It's more like a very, very deep gunmetal gray, which is okay when you compare him to the rest of the figures. It's not like he stands out. It is still very much representative of Cole's colors. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the weapon, which is the only unique one, aside from Wu's, of course, out of all these figures, that of course is a hammer. Cole uses a hammer, all of the other minifigures use golden katana, so that's very much unique for Cole. Let's take a look at the back of this figure so we can actually get a look at some of the other printing. And of course, here's the back of the figure, very clean and very well done, much like the rest of these golden legacy figures. Overall, this version of Cole is really well done, though I do prefer some of the other golden figures a little bit more to this one. That's not to say that this figure is bad, it's definitely not, just not my favorite when you compare it to the rest of the group. Next up, we have the Ninjago Legacy Golden Nia figure, which actually came out in the most recent Fire Dragon set, the Fire Dragon Attack from Ninjago Legacy. Now, my main concern about this figure going in was that the blue and the gold would not really work all that well together. Fortunately, I was wrong. These colors absolutely work well together. The azure blue, or whatever you want to call it, works really well with the gold. I think this figure looks fantastic. Of course, the obvious thing about this figure is the new hairpiece, which is indeed new for this year. It's kind of a headband mold with Nia's hairpiece. Very similar to what we saw in the island sets for the rest of the ninja. She also uses that same color half mask, which is okay. I can tell why they won't make, you know, gold versions of these masks, though I do wish they would eventually pump those out. But the printing on this figure looks really good. The torso print looks excellent for this version of Nia. I love the water detailing. And like I said, the blue and the gold work really well together. Of course, she uses the traditional golden ZX armor with two golden katana attached to it, which is you know, obvious for Nia, but I really love that hairpiece. That hairpiece just looks fantastic to me. Let's go ahead and take some stuff off so we can look at the back of this figure. But yeah, this is basically what the back looks like. I love that symbol. I love the water detailing. This figure just looks so, so good. The face is obviously the same as every other Nia face that we've received over the past couple of years for Ninjago, so nothing new there. But overall, this figure is just simply fantastic. There's not much else I can say about it. It's really, really good. I personally think LEGO did all of the right things and made all of the right decisions when designing this figure. It just looks so 
good. I'm really impressed with how this one turned out. Next up, based on his appearance in Prime Empire, we have the Golden Legacy variant of Jay, which can actually be found in the Ninjago Legacy Zane's Titan mech battle set. This thing looks really cool. A lot of people really don't like this figure, but I think it looks fine. I feel like some folks are just upset that the Prime Empire hood is being reused again, even though that hood was very specific towards the actual Prime Empire season. As its own individual ninja hood, I think it looks okay. Even the armor looks really good. Obviously, the printing on this guy is very, very phenomenal, much like the other ones. I love the lightning detailing. The blue here looks really cool as well. This one uses a more deeper blue as opposed to Nia's more azure blue coloring. The face is obviously the same J face that we've been getting over and over again, so nothing new there. Though this hood piece, once again, is very, very cool. I love how this one turned out. Even the armor looks good. And of course, like some other ninja in this line, two golden katana are equipped for J to utilize in battle. And once again, this figure just looks awesome. Let's take some stuff off so we can look at the back. Much like the other golden figures, the back looks fantastic with more printing and a giant symbol to look at, which looks really good. And just overall, I am very impressed with how this figure turned out as well. It's not my favorite of all of the uh, golden legacy figures that we have so far, but it still is very good, all things considered, and I don't hate it as much as some other people do. I think this figure is just fine, to say the least. The Master Wu minifigure is sort of like a centerpiece of the entire Golden Ninja collection. This guy is actually only obtainable in the Ninjago City Gardens set, which of course just so happens to be the largest Ninjago set of all time as of the time of recording this video right here. So this figure is kind of rare and very sought after, very much so in terms of comparing him to the other Golden Ninja. This guy is probably the rarest out of the entire collection, and as a figure, he looks pretty cool. You can probably see, but unlike the other Golden characters, he actually has a golden face, which is a first for this line. All of the other Golden figures use their traditional faces. Master Wu uses a golden version of that same uh, face that he's been using since Season 11. The actual figure itself looks really cool. The beard is unfortunately kind of blocking some of the printing, but you can kind of see what's going on there. We'll take a closer look at that in a second, but with uh, the back exposed, we can actually get a good look at that, which is, you know, really cool. Really, really nice. I love how that print turned out. Let's take a look at the front of the print really quick. So yeah, this is the front of the figure. Very clean, very nice looking, much like the back, and you can see that face print as well. It's just solid gold, basically. Even the ponytail on the back is golden, which is kind of awkward when you compare him to the rest of the collection. I wish he kind of used his regular face, but just having this guy have a golden face and gold all the way through just makes him seem like a proper centerpiece for this entire collection. As a golden collectible figure for this year, I think this figure turned out to be one of the most amazing ones of the entire collection. Like I said, he's probably the rarest, and for me, I personally use him as a centerpiece for my entire collection just because I think this guy is really cool looking, and I feel like he looks great as the center of the entire collection. Continuing on with the ninja themselves, here we have Lloyd in his golden legacy form, which is actually obtainable in the Tournament of Elements set. So kind of a small set, this guy is very easy to get your hands on, and as you might have seen in the intro of this video, I do oftentimes display this guy with a green half mask because I feel like the figure looks much better and much more complete with a green mask. Unfortunately, in the actual Tournament of Elements set as it is, this guy actually just comes like this, which I still think is a very solid looking figure. The torso print looks really nice, I love the dragon detailing, the green looks really nice too among the gold, obviously Lloyd is kind of known for being gold sometimes and I feel like he pulls off the gold a lot better than some of the other characters, but it still looks very very good. The face is obviously the exact same Lloyd face that we've been getting for years, though the hair is the exact same same one from the island, with the hair and the headband combination. He also uses the ZX armor with two golden katana. This guy has a lot in common with the Nia figure, which makes me think that this guy might actually be from the island or Seabound, whatever you think. I think he's personally from the island. It's trying to be island Lloyd, but golden. Let's take a look at the back of this print. Here's what the back looks like. Obviously very clean and crisp as well. The dragon kind of extends from the torso. You can kind of see how that works. It sort of makes an entire dragon with the tail on the back and the head on the front looks really good, and if we armor him up the rest of the way, we can actually get the fully completed figure once again. And once again, here's the full figure, but this time I added a green half mask. I think that just makes the figure look a lot more complete and a lot more proper in my personal opinion. Next up, let's take a look at the Ninjago Legacy Golden version of Kai, which is actually available in the Boulder Blaster Legacy remake. So this version of Kai is, to me, based on the Season 11 version of the character from the show in the sets, even though some aspects of 
this figure may suggest otherwise, I still think that this figure is very well done, and it might be in fact my favorite of the Golden Legacy figures. For one, the torso print is really well done. Golden Red is another color combination that just looks beautiful, and I think this Kai figure absolutely nails it. I love the fire detailing on the torso, I love the belt, I love the whole uh, shirt underneath, that looks really nice, and just overall this figure looks fantastic. The mask looks really good too, being the traditional Ninjago Legacy slash March of the Oni mask done up in gold and red. It's a very simplistic color scheme, but it works really well, and it's very effective. The shoulder armor that Kai uses is the Golden Season 11 shoulder armor, so nothing too new there for the Ninjago Legacy line, but just taking a look at uh, the Kai face, yeah, there's also nothing new. It's the same Kai face that we've been seeing for years now, but let's take a look at that back printing. The back printing here looks really nice, really well done as well. I just love how the backs of these figures look. In a lot of ways, I wish the back was actually the front of the figure, though the actual front of the figure still looks really good no matter how good the back looks. I think this figure all in all is a very solid addition to this line and a very, very good representation of a golden ninja. So yeah, this version of Kai might just be my favorite out of the entire golden ninja line, I think this is just a very solid example of a golden ninja, and I feel like the rest of these figures should have followed this one's example. I would not complain if all of the golden figures looked exactly like this one. And lastly in the collection, we have here the Ninjago Legacy Golden Variant of Zane, which is actually obtainable in the Ultrasonic Raider Legacy Remake. Now this one has a lot of issues according to a lot of people. I personally don't think it looks all that bad though. A lot of people complain that the actual hood itself is way too green in terms of a color as opposed to a traditional icy blue, but I don't know, it looks really good all things considered. In person it looks really, really good. The actual rest of the figure itself is still very good. The torso print looks incredible. I love how you can see the underneath of Zane's uh, skin, I suppose. You can kind of see his heart there or his power source, and obviously the snowflake detailing around the torso looks really good too. Love the white. I just wish there was a little bit more white on the hood itself. Traditionally, Zane uses this, uh, this face and he does still Still here as well. It's the exact same face that we've been receiving since Sons of Garmadon, I believe, so also a face that's been used for a very long time. But let's take a look at the back of that torso print, and then we will round out this video with that. So this is what the back of the torso print looks like. Very, very cool as well. Uh, no pun intended. Just removing the mask, you can see it a little better. I just really love how the white and the gold look together. I just wish that the mask actually had some white on it instead of all of this ice blue. I feel like if they used a white version of the Season 11 traditional mask, much like they did with the Kai for Red, I don't think that would have looked too bad. But of course, all in all, this figure is still very good. Can't really complain too much about this one right here. It's a solid representation of Golden Zane. So there you guys have it. These have been my thoughts on all seven of the Ninjago Legacy 10 year anniversary Golden Collectible figures. Which one of these is your favorite? And which ones do you have? And which ones do you not have? Do you have the full collection or are you still missing some? So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description from other forms of social media. As always, big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again the Marvelous Jan. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video once again. My name is Fiona Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell.